Welcome to the Every Step Web Recorder introduction video. Since this is the first time using the tool, let's go ahead and record a new script. There are several ways in which you can begin recording a new script. We're going to do so by creating a new monitoring device while logged into our .com monitor account. Specifically, we are going to create a new script by recording browser interactions. As with all new Every Step scripts, we need to supply the starting URL from which we want to begin our recording. Next, we can select the type of browser emulation we want to use for our script. Note that this is not headless browser testing. Browser emulation provides a monitoring and testing environment which is authentic and realistic to the user experience that visitors to your site or a web application experience when compared to headless browser testing. You can select Chrome or Edge as your testing browser. Either choice provides you with several pre-configured resolutions with which to record your script and run your testing and monitoring. If you need to configure your script for a mobile platform, you'll see that there are many of the most popular and common mobile platforms available to you. Each is configured with the appropriate recording resolution for the appropriate platform. For this introduction video, we're going to stick with the default setting of Desktop Chrome. To start recording, we click Record Now. Now our site is completely loaded. But before moving on, let's look at the left-hand toolbar. At the top, you'll see the recording indicator, and just below it is the stop button. Next, you'll find the RIA recorder options, which include keyboard input and mouse movements, as well as RIA images. RIA stands for Rich Internet Applications that include the use of Adobe Flash, Apache, HTML5, Java applets, Microsoft Silverlight, or other web technologies that are delivered by a site-specific browser plugin or other rendering methods which may not create a DOM object or element. Check with your account manager, our technical support, or watch our video on RIA monitoring if you feel that our RIA recording is suited for your needs. Just below the RIA recorder options, you'll see validation, which includes keyword and image validation. I highly recommend that you perform keyword validation on at least one or two words per new web page. This helps to ensure that not only has the web server responded to the HTTP request, but that the browser has rendered the page content and is being displayed correctly with respect to the page's text. Always try to select words that you know are going to appear on the page regardless of changes to the layout of the page or its content. To add a keyword, simply select the keyword button and type the keyword you wish to validate into the keyword validation dialog box. You will immediately see in your script the keyword assert line is added to your script with the word you provided. Another way that you can add a keyword for validation is by simply selecting the word on the page. Then right click the selected word and select validate keyword. This will automatically populate the keyword validation dialog box. This is my preferred method as I know that I won't accidentally mistype the word and it also ensures that the capitalization and any spacing is correct. These are important as differences in capitalization will cause the keyword to be invalidated and generate a false positive error. Also, manually populating the keyword validation dialog box by typing causes some people to add a spacebar or strike the enter button due to habit. These non-printed characters will become part of the script and potentially cause validation to fail. Next, we're going to set up an image validation. Image validation is like keyword validation. However, you can select an image logo or area of the page to validate its correct rendering and display by the browser. From a graphical standpoint, when your script performs an image validation, it conducts a pixel-by-pixel -pixel comparison of this script to what is displayed on the rendered page. To add image validation, simply select the Image button and then click Hold and drag around the area you want to graphically validate. Next, we're going to log into the website to help validate the functionality of our login form. Because we're on a new page, we're going to add another keyword to validate. Last, we're going to sign out of our account. Make sure you always sign out of the application or website to ensure your script performs and subsequent monitoring performs correctly. Now we're done creating our script so we can stop recording. Once the recording has stopped, the tool notifies you about the number of tasks you have recorded. 
you can see that you can continue adding to your recorded script if you simply need a stopping point. You'll also see that we need to play back the script we've just recorded. Playback of the script is important for a couple of different reasons. First, it provides us the opportunity to watch what we have recorded to make sure all the steps we want to monitor are present in the script. Second, we need to ensure that the script does not contain any errors within the script itself or any possible network errors. If any errors are detected during playback of the script, they will be identified and you'll be given the chance to fix any issues. Once the script is finished with its playback and all errors are taken care of, we can save it to the device. Here we can see that the script has embedded itself into our newly created device and is ready to run our monitoring. If you have any questions, please be sure to check our knowledge base, reach out to your account manager, or to our technical support. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you next time.